Good morning. My name is Paula Jubik, Executive Director at Catholic Charities Disability Services. People with intellectual and developmental disabilities bring value and diversity to our society. Our mission at Catholic Charities Disability Services, an agency of the Catholic Charities Diocese of Albany, is turning disabilities into capabilities, providing quality services with integrity, compassion, and respect. I write to you today as a partner in providing these essential supports to those with IDD to inform and advocate for needed change and fulfillment of our mission in upholding Section 1309 of the Mental Hygiene Law, which charges OPWDD with the responsibility for seeing that persons with developmental disabilities are provided with care and treatment and that such care, treatment, and rehabilitation of high quality and effectiveness. For many years, people with disabilities in the essential workforce that cares, supports, and empowers them have been overlooked. Their compensation and job recognition has remained stagnant despite their commitment to intangible action of a just society for our most vulnerable New Yorkers. While New York has long since closed institutions like Willowbrook, where people suffered horrific and inhumane care, yet we continue to face similar challenges today, albeit to a much lesser degree. Challenges that result from an underpaid and overwhelmed workforce that is chronically forgotten. This has forced the quality of care to be below baseline with the priority on keeping people safe. Our dedicated heroes often clock into a shift not knowing when they will leave. Mandated overtime is one of, if not our biggest concern. It is not a solution and creates barriers for people entering into our field of work, whose main purpose is breaking barriers down. This impacts all levels of service in the IDD sector. We find ourselves overcompensating during direct support professional week to make up for the inequities. These one-time payments of acknowledgement and message of appreciation are adequate, if not insulting. The workforce in the IDD sector has had enough. Who will take care of people when we drive our workforce into the ground? Do we drop people off at the local emergency room for 24-hour care? Or does the authorized state agency have the capacity? These are all realities providers face today in year 2021, 34 years removed from Willowbrook. Well before last March, the IDD sector was headed over a cliff with no lifeline. The COVID-19 pandemic had only made matters worse. Our agency has 29 DSPs leave our employment since May of 2021. This year, we've screened 246 people, a mere 15 retain employment with the agency. We are not unique in the IDD sector. Our fellow providers are seeing similar challenges. In August, we had to implement an emergency response plan, which included a temporary relocation in which five of the people we support were taken out of their home and moved to open vacancies within the agency. We have get, gone so far as to ask families to take their loved one home, resulting in a 50% reduction to our therapeutic rates. As part of this plan, we required all non-direct care employees, including senior administration, to work as relief staff in our residential programs. This bottlenecks agency operations in their primary roles and creates an incredible amount of stress on our staff. This describes anything but high quality and effectiveness. There is a silver lining. People are starting to listen to the experiences from stakeholders along with growing advocacy calling for tangible changes to save our system of intellectual and developmental disabilities. We can no longer be complacent and it will take many partnerships to affect change. We must recognize direct support professional as a standard occupation classification and compensate the job adequately and fairly. That may mean increasing appropriations and evaluating how funds are being managed within the OPWDD system. For example, infrastructure and managed care. Providers need to pay above minimum wage to remain in competition with the job market. Providers can only do this if they are funded to do so. It cannot be an unfended mandate like mandated overtime as we've become far too accustomed to. Providers need to develop the workforce through training and professional development. They need to evaluate the operational structure to ensure people feel appreciated and supported on all levels. The state should consider partnering with accredited entity, much like agencies do, on certification programs to improve professional development and growth within the organization and field on a national level. I encourage you to give our neighbors with intellectual and developmental disabilities and the people who assist them the thought, attention, and changes they so deserve. We all have to do better, and the time is now.